and good afternoon YWCA viewers. Today we are on episode 10 of series one of the Butterfly Effect, which is sponsored by Club 1888, which is a YWCA volunteer program. This is an empowerment series where volunteer hosts interview inspiring women in our community. And today we are honored to have Sharon Burstein with us. So a little bit about Sharon, um, in case you didn't know, she's an award-winning author and one of America's most respected international motivational speakers. She's trained and spoken to hundreds of thousands of people of all ages, including students and adults, using her training and leadership methods. Through her speaking, leadership training, consulting, and coaching, Sharon inspires people by building their confidence to achieve more success in life. She enables people to create and recognize their inner and outer leadership image. Sharon has created numerous award-winning books and training programs and has been recognized and received numerous awards for her career achievements and leadership. Her high energy and enthusiasm that she brings to everything she does is contagious. And I think we're all about to catch it today. So welcome, Sharon. Welcome, Kim. Kim, it is so great to see you. I have been so excited about this. Club 1888 is great. The YWCA in Amazing Women. So hello, all you amazing women. Kim, you are the most astounding and great hostess. So I am just so excited to be here. How, you know, bring on the questions. Let's just have some fun. Okay, so the first one, I'm sure you're going to have no problem with. Tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> what do you want the world to know about Sharon? Well, Sharon loves people, as we all know. I'm all about building connections, changing lives, and building futures. And for the last probably seven to eight years is when I've really been speaking pretty much most of my uh, full time and writing books, writing a lot of articles. You may see a little bit of different background here behind me, and I told Kim a little bit about this. But I started off my career, which many of you may know from reading my biographies or anything, as an educator. And I've also taught the land of the little people and I've taught at the collegiate level while I've owned uh, as an adjunct while owning my own businesses. During pandemic times, uh, we have a house actually on Lake George and the Ticonderoga School District has been desperate for uh, substitutes. So in a conversation with their superintendent around the holidays, I said, you know, count me in. I'm all about connections. I love talking to kids. If you come to Leadership Summit America, we always have students, except for this past year. And so today I am teaching Kim algebra. Oh, worst subject <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it, it's been wonderful, but I'll tell you one of the things that I have so adored doing this on occasion and being up here is just being with students, you know, and trying to inspire, bringing them back around. We're having a lot of fun, but you know, Kim, you and I are kind of distant here today, but it's nice, so nice just to be live with people again. And so I think I'm getting as much inspiration from them as right. they're getting from me. So, right. you know, aside from my books, I've done media, I've owned companies for 25 years. Basically, I love building people up, connecting people, you know, just, you know, I have more friends every day. So connect with me, connect with Kim on Facebook, LinkedIn. We're both real huge open communicators. Absolutely. Absolutely. So talking a little bit about, you know, you're inspiring and you, you've helped so many people in your career and along the way, but who inspired you when you were younger? Or you know, could have been last week even. Who, is it, who inspires you? Great question. Uh, the biggest inspiration and mentor in my life growing up was my paternal grandmother, Lillian, who lived in Schenectady. My grandfather, like most of us who are probably listening here who are in the Schenectady or Capital Region, uh, was a big GE family. And she was an amazing, amazing person. I had two parents. They're lovely people. But as far as being the person who was really inspirational and kept pushing me forward and said, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. And she was the person to champion every cause. And I was always the outgoing one in my family and had a younger uh, sister, an older sister who was very quiet. So my parents were always like, why can't you be more like your sister Connie? And it's like, <laughs> because I'm not her. And, you know, my grandmother understood this and really pushed me forward to go for all my dreams and, 
and everything. But you know what? We should always have mentors in our lives and people who inspire us. I'll tell you right now, you know, the ins inspiration, I've had a couple of kids come in and say, oh, Mrs. B, because lots of times I'll have the kids call me Mrs. Brewstein or you call me Mrs. B. And they said, oh, you're our favorite sub. So, yeah, that's been great. Ah, <laughs> two short months. Look at you. Look at you to the top of the pile. So, uh, you know, you know, if you can't have fun, I mean, these kids are so downtrodden. And I don't have, I do have a beautiful daughter who's grown, a lawyer. I'll just get my little plug in for our lovely daughter, Alexandra. But, you know, so I know a lot of you who are listening to this and watching this have children at home. And boy, my heart goes out to you because that has added a whole extra layer to everyone in this whole COVID situation. When you're dealing with your business, when you're dealing with your children, your family. I mean, as we all know, lots of times throughout all of this, we've had a variety of, of people's kids, infants, dogs, cats, birds. There's been a whole host of people who have joined us. So, you know, I love inspiring people and getting from inspiration and people in countless ways. And there's yeah. countless ways to get inspiration. Absolutely, absolutely. So we talked about who inspired you. How about a mentor? Who would you describe as a mentor or? Oh, well, certainly my grandmother. Let's go back to grandma number one. In my college years, I worked for a wonderful man named Charlie Wood. Now, many of you may know that, but name, many of you may yeah. not, but he owned The Great Escape or Storytown. Okay. And a lot of things at that time. And I worked for Charlie all through college. What I loved about Charlie is, and at the time I was in PR and education, but I was doing PR for Charlie and he would race around Storytown and he'd always have his coat on and be really dressed. And then suddenly he'd throw off his jacket and I would catch him and he'd sit there and he'd watch and he might go over to a person and let's just use you, Kim, and say, Kim, good morning, how are you? And you'd say, well, good morning, Mr. Wood. And it's like, look what you're doing there. I, you know, I'm really fascinated by how you're cutting those flowers or whatever it may be on the grounds or didn't matter. And he'd say, you, would you mind if I showed you a different way? And of course you would say, of course, please do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so there Charlie would be, you know, the old rest, but doing that. And he'd fuss around and do whatever it was that he was looking to do. And he'd say, what do you think of this way, Kim? And the smart person would say, it's a great job, Mr. Wood. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. And he'd say, why don't you give it a try? Let's try your way and let's try my way and see what <laughs> works best for us. Pivotal word, us. Yes. And so we would try it. And inevitably, the person would usually say, that was great, Mr. Wood. Thank you so much. <laughs> exactly. And off he would go. So about three days, we'd circle back and say, oh, Kim, this looks great. How's everything going? And what I loved about Charlie is he never said, Kim, you are screwing up. You are really messing up. This is the worst way you could do. You know, just let's get somebody who knows what they're doing in here. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I learned from Charlie is to show people by example. And you don't want to embarrass people. Lots of times people don't know another way. So if you show right. them and lead by example, but the other thing is you're never above somebody's le other's level, you know, so never do anything, you know, so always, always be ready to get in there. Never ask anything to anybody to do anything that you haven't or couldn't or wouldn't do yourself. That and is so, yeah, great advice. You know, and I'm very much, I'm, I think you're the same way. I'm very hands-on. So people will ask me all the time, so Sharon, what is your title? And it's like, there is one on my business card, which is kind of a fun one, actually. But I usually tell people, I'm director of whatever needs to be done. So if <laughs> something, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm running an event and I have a whole team doing things, something needs to be done. We're on a time schedule. You get in there and just do it. Don't say, well, that's not my job. Oh, and, you know, and oh. I hate that. You know, people say, oh, I'm the leader, I'm the boss. And it's like, no, a real leader is all about building camaraderie. It's all about building teamwork. 
because the only way, I mean, things have to get done. And you can either sit there and tap your feet and get everybody upset and nervous, or you can pitch in and together we can get it done, we can get it done well, and we can get it done on time and have a little fun. So uh, I have so many. Bob Danzig was a great leader who was the started in the mailroom at um, uh, the Times Union, worked his way up to chairman emeritus of all of Hearst's publications. He was mm. the person who actually, I have to blame for my speaking career, who encouraged me to do it for many years. And it was after our daughter graduated from law school that I finally said, okay, full time, now I can do this. I don't have other situations. So the key thing is always have mentors above you, but also significantly is we all need to be mentors behind us. Now, just, you know, that's little sisters, it's cousins, it's nieces, it's nephews, it's colleagues, it's anybody who can benefit from things that you have already done. Because you can always cut your learning curve by communicating and connecting with somebody who's already successfully done it. And you know what? Never, and Kim, this is crucial, never, never be afraid of contacting and picking up the phone and asking somebody. You may be scared to say, oh, they'll never speak to me. Guess what? I don't think I have ever picked up the phone to ask somebody for real advice when they mm -hmm. haven't doesn't matter who it was they're speaking to. I mean, the other day, which I thought was cool because I, I, am a, I used to design a lot of clothes, I was on the phone with Vera Wang. Well, to me, that's pretty cool. I really yeah. love Vera Seriously? Wang. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's like, oh, you know, and it's now, now we hang out and we do a lot of things. So, I mean, a lot of these people just become part of your connections and your friends. People are people. That's it. Well, I get that. One time I had a call, um, Jane Golub for something, and I said, Mrs. Golub. And she goes, oh, no, honey, Jane. Absolutely. And I will, that's a lesson I will never, ever forget. I mean, here it's, you know, Mrs. Jane Golub. And she was like, oh, no, honey, it's just Jane. So she yeah. was such a wonderful, classy, lovely, lovely lady. I think we all miss Jane. Yep. And Neil is the same way. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So how did you end up doing what you're doing now? I mean, wow. we, we, understood the, we, we got the substitute teaching thing down. But I mean, in, in general, I mean, you know, this this biography and the books and the talks and the seminars and there's just so much. It's a weird background, but it fits me. Where my teaching comes, uh, where my um, speaking comes, it really is full circle to coming back to my teaching. So in many regards, I think I've made this wonderful full circle and because speaking is really connecting. It's educating and building people up, or at least that's what great educators do. They inspire you to reach new levels. They're there to catch you, but continue to enforce, reinforce you. And that's what I'm all about. So the brief is after I left teaching, I became a reading consultant um, in the Alpha Reading Program, which was a program I had taught from there. Microcomputers were in their infancy, I mean, real infancy, and I decided to try and move towards education in that. I did, I was part of Victor Technologies, which was uh, the darling of Forbes and Fortune, and they kind of, like the dot-comers, we went through a lot of different groups that really didn't make that, and from there, I um, had gone back, I did masters and I was uh, doing marketing and uh, headed marketing for a major firm called Eastern Exclusives and took AT&T through the divestiture, which was great because my day was pretty much, and that's where I really learned that there was nobody who was going to intimidate me in my life because my day was pretty much picking up the phone before, before computers really. And um, I was setting meetings with pretty much every CEO in the country. And we were doing a lot of very creative programs which were value added, state of the art mm -hmm. then. And then I met my husband, <laughs> I moved here uh, because I was traveling about 350,000 miles a year at that point, which wow. was great when you're dating and have a distance relationship, but not so much when you're together. And headed vice president of corp uh, corporate communications for a large insurance conglomerate. And by the way, of a 25 year old company with, you know, like a couple thousand people, I became the only woman VP. 
which is interesting because, I mean, it was a big glass ceiling and a whole different story. And shortly after our daughter was born, I started my own companies and uh, have had public relations companies. I then was playing a lot of tennis. Uh, I had owned, I started designing kind of crazily uh, for me because uh, I only wear natural fibers. I don't wear polyester or anything like that. I don't wear things that breathe, don't breathe. Started designing a lot of my own tennis clothes, which led to uh, my tennis company. I had a global tennis company, Nesquik Corp, which got sold out to, shall we say, one of the big groups. And um, then I created a couple patents. So I own patents as well for high chairs and a few juvenile furniture, which was actually based off of Alexandra and was writing and speaking. And I, in between, I started my career actually on, you know, the camera, this side of the camera, but then I done a lot of directing, producing, uh, a lot of different television shows, a lot of movies, more documentaries, and uh, now really do speaking. So, I mean, I can kind of understand everybody's lingo, but no matter what I've done, I've always tried to really work to inspire people, to help grow people, and I'm very team-centered. That's so awesome. a weird background. Yeah, that's it, but it's great, right? We all ended up, we all got here somehow. So just to play a little bit more on what you um, had said, how does your identity as a woman really play a role in your industry? You told us you were the only vice president, you know, glass ceiling, still out there, um, much more so when we were younger. But tell me a little bit more about being a woman in in just all the different facets that you've been involved in, because I'm sure a lot of times you were the only woman at the table. Uh, there have been many times that I was the only woman at the table, and I've been told, you know, it's interesting because when men have a difference of opinion, they're having a difference of opinion. Mm -hmm. You and I, if we have a difference yeah. of opinion, are having mm -hmm. suddenly a cat fight, mm -hmm. and in, in men's opinion. And, uh, you know, we process, women do things differently. Thankfully, things are settling down, but you know what? There are still things that we haven't broken through. So I think with women, I think it's always, you know, if you are well-versed and whatnot, is stand your ground. Stand your ground, look people right in the eye, smile, don't get upset. Sometimes I use what our daughter calls your low, slow voice. <laughs> and she used to say, oh, please don't use that, mom. And I find <laughs> that rather than, yeah, really, <laughs> rather than, screaming i just tend to bring it down and i'll talk low and slow but don't be scared to make your point if you were right hold your ground and you know really don't take no for an answer you know you can work to a compromise a compromise is when both sides are not necessarily don't get everything you want but you've reached a, a common middle I work with building women up a lot. And actually, I'm so happy you brought that up because I do a, an event just for women, which is called Uniquely You, Putting Women First, The Power of Possible. And this will be its fourth year. And that's kind of coming up in July, the 23rd through 25th. And we do it at Weawaka, uh, which is on the beautiful shores of Lake George. And everybody who's listening, I would love to have you come to Uniquely You, certainly. And you can come on my website, www.sharonbrewstein.com. But regardless, Weawaka is so special because Weawaka is the oldest women's retreat in the country. Oh, and wow. It, 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 it is an amazing place. Literally, when you get on the shores of Weawaka, you go, <sighs> I mean, I was speaking there probably about five years ago. And I was talking about, you know, with my books, uh, Life Snacks and Life Snacks for Women that night. And people had been asking me, would you do an event just for women? Because I have Leadership Summit America. And it was like, listen, someday when I find the right place, we'll talk about it. And when I got there, after I spoke that night, I was asking the executive director, who is a different person now, now Doreen is there and she's marvelous. I said, would you mind if I walked around? She said, no. And as I walked, I came back and I said, you know what, could we meet next week? I said, there's something I think I'd like to do next summer. And that was the beginning of Uniquely You. And we have so much fun. It's all about building you up, each woman to be your best you and connecting women together. 
And it's great because we have women ranging, and we do have a 24-year-old this year so far, and I think that our oldest is right around 70. And we put everybody together. It's very hands-on, fun. We go out on boats, and we just have a – it's building you. So uh, there is so much out there to build women out. Reach out, connect with women, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm an open book, so anybody who knows me knows – call me email me those are my two preferences you can text me but um whatever i will get back to you but if you call me or email me i'll get back to you quicker than if you text or do anything else great so think back what you know now what would you tell your 21 year old self what would i tell my 21 year old self to be my never, i don't think you were ever a shrinking violet or you know no, i wasn't a shrinking violet but i was much quieter than I, okay. than I was. Um, I think to be confident and be who you are, which is why I always have high school students at, at Leadership Summit America other than this year. And I love speaking in high schools or even junior highs and building kids up because they are our future leaders. And the more confidence and self-esteem we can get in children and our youth moving forward, the stronger they're going to be in their learning and about themselves. So that would be one of the things. And of course, you know, I grew up in that pivotal age where a woman's place, you know, we weren't supposed to have those kinds of big voices. And sometimes I would, and uh, to be a lot more confident and keep learning, always be a learn, uh, I say, always be an able person, always be learning every day. You know, and when you're a lifelong learner, you know, keep on going. But I think now, you know, where before I may have held back and held somebody like Jane uh, go a, a little bit more in um, awe or, you know, somebody, you know, if I, uh, Madeline Albright, you know, when I would run into Madeline if I was in Washington, uh, you know, as I got older and would run into different people, it would be like, now, you know, people are people and never... Take every opportunity, I would say to everybody who's young, take every opportunity you have to introduce yourself to others. You will find that your network will grow and your network really affects your net worth. Absolutely, absolutely. So you've told us a whole lot, but if you could sum it up, and it doesn't matter whether it's <clears throat> five words or 500, what do you want other women to know? First of all, that's a good question. I'm going to do it two ways. Perfect. Believe in you. So I always get people to say, I believe in me. Because you know what? It doesn't matter where you are on this whole spectrum of life or what you're doing. If you do not believe in yourself and what you're doing, no one else is going to believe in you. It doesn't matter what your title is. Because if you're not confident in that. So I guess the other thing I would say is, I would share the 10 most powerful words in the world. Do you know what they are, Kim? I know what the seven deadliest are. <laughs> you know we've done it <laughs> that way. The 10 most powerful. I don't, so do tell me. Okay. If it is to be, it is up to me. Me. Because you know what? If you want to get ahead in life, it's not somebody else's situation. It's yours. So own it. There is no they. If it is to be, it is up to me. So that's what I would take. You know, take responsibility for your actions. Everybody loves taking responsibility when something goes good. But if you want to grow and get to where you want to go, and, you know, I'm a good example. Where you start is not where you have to end. It's a big world. Go out, enjoy it, um, fulfill things. But you know what? Your dreams, dreams are the previews of coming attractions. And you know what? Everything in life, everything you're wearing, everything that's around you was somebody's dream, vision, and idea. And you know what? The greatest thing is there are so many things that don't exist yet, and why can't it be you? Correct. Correct. So let's do something a little goofy. Since you've been interviewed so many times and you've interviewed so many people, what's something no one's ever asked you but... Ooh. What would your response to that be? Um, what is my favorite thing? My um, 
you know, some of my favorite things, you know, I love being active, but I must say that if you could put me on the beach with a big, a good book, uh, that is probably also and walk on the beach. That is probably yeah. one of my greatest ideas of heaven on earth, especially Absolutely. if I can take a walk on the beach and watch the sunrise at the same time. Yep. And I love watching the shells coming and going and yeah, you know, it's the simple things. Uh, you know, I, I am very out there, but I will tell you that I also really, as much as I love being out there with people, there are times when just silence is like the best sound in the world. Absolutely. And learn to be comfortable with yourself, you know, so it's, that's fun. And I must say there's two things, if you know me, that I adore ice cream. So I'm kind of like the Anita Bryant, I used to say <laughs> a day without orange juice is a day without sunshine. I kind of change it around and go a day without ice cream is like a day without sunshine. <laughs> So that's awesome. And so, I mean, this is just like, you've answered this, but let's pare it down. What's unique to you, a special talent or what excites you? Um, we know ice cream and beaches and talking to kids, but is there anything else we didn't touch upon? Uh, wow. I'm a huge gardener. So, uh, I don't know if it, it certainly isn't unique, probably making flower arrangements. I just brought two into all the office today with daffodils. By the way, I found parsley in my pots up here last night. I was so excited. Um, you know, I think it's just that I have so many diverse interests. So, I mean, if you were to find me, you would probably find me on a tennis court or in a garden if I were just having a lot of free time. Awesome. Awesome. So what's the, believe that we're going to wrap up, but, We'll leave this up to you. What's the best advice that you ever received or what's the best advice you want everyone listening to, to take away today? Always keep trying, choose to be amazing. You are unique. There is no pip on out there. That's like you, you are unique. You have your own DNA. So celebrate your being uniqueness. So often we try to fit in when you were born to stand out. So find out what gives you purpose and passion, not somebody else's. Kim and I, I'm sure you and I share a lot of passions and purpose, but we also have our own purpose and passion and things that we want to do and accomplish. So celebrate the person that you are. Learn to grow and build yourself up. I'm happy to do that. There are lots of books and stuff, but always believe in you. And you know what, as I tell people that one of the things, if you need a little bit more encouragement is get in you know, go right in front of the mirror and say, I believe in me. And just keep saying, I believe in me. And just do it. You can do it quietly. You can do it loudly. But the more you say, it, you know what? The brain is going to catch up. So even if you're not believing it at first, the more you say it, the brain's got it. It's like, I've got it. I've got you. Just go on out and nail it. And there you will. Me. Because when you believe in you, everybody else, it all will start to fall in the line. Absolutely. And I lied. One last question. Tell everybody why they need to be part of Club 1888 with us. Uh, Club 1888, ladies, is amazing. You know, we've been doing a lot of it distant, and I know we're starting to move back in. But if you want to connect with just like hundreds of amazing women covering the spectrum and the rainbow of backgrounds, colors, we are a diverse group. We're all about building each other up, learning about them, making connections, helping the why. The why has been amazing. I've been engaged with the why in Schenectady. I think Kim already knows this. I took my water safety instruction there when I was in high school. So to me, it's great to be back here at the why. The why WCA does so much for women. So come join us in Club 1888. There's everything you need online. Kinder McHale will also help you uh, along the way if you want to just dial the YWCA. But I know, Kim, I can't wait to meet everybody who's on here with us today. So Facebook me, email me, uh, Sharon at SharonBerstein.com. Uh, give me a call. My, go on my web. My phone number is on there. And most of all, join Club 1888 because you will be so happy. Yeah, we're, I must say, we are a great bunch of women. We, we, we have are fun we and we love fantastic. learning about and from each other. We're supporting inspiration, but it's yeah. all about ladies. You know, and as I say, how many friends can you have? What's the number, what's the total number? 
and it's unlimited. It's the same thing with connections. And ladies, we have to be more connected to support and build each other up. And that's what we're doing. So if you're listening and saying, oh, I'm just starting my career, what will I add? Just come, be part of it, and you won't ask that question again. Exactly. Well, with that, we're going to end this segment for today. And Sharon, thank you so much for taking the time. We greatly appreciate it. And follow us, um, Club 1888, part of the YWCA on Facebook and Instagram. And please come out and see all the great stuff we've got going on. So with that, bye, my dear. Back to you. Thank you. You are wonderful. Oh, as are you. Thanks.